Hello everyone and welcome to this latest episode of Book Time with Elvis with me, Mark. Um, I just thought I'd make a quick video today to give an update as to my reading this March. If you remember a few videos ago, I told you my rather belated plans to join in with some of the reading topics for this month. Uh, regarding the March Mystery Madness, uh, I chose two books, uh, Fatal Finds in Nuala by Harriet Steele and The Department of Sensitive Crimes by Alexander McCall Smith. Regarding uh, Fatal Finds in Nuala, uh, I finished it the other day. It's not surprising, it is quite a small book. Uh, most of the books in the series are. It was very enjoyable. Uh, again, like all the other books uh, in that series. And uh, yeah, it was quite a nice, cosy little mystery. Uh, it's centered around the main character, uh, Inspector Shanti De Silva. And this time there was a murder of a local uh, villager from one of the ethnic minorities in uh, in Ceylon. Well, it's it's Ceylon at the, at the time, as the, the books are set in the 1930s, but of course current day uh, Sri Lanka. And uh, this murder seems to be linked to some kind of archaeological discovery, and there's all sorts of little, you know, plots among uh, local people and uh, this kind of thing as he seeks to determine how linked uh, the death of this villager is to... Um, uh, this archaeological site. It's very interesting. It was it was good. Um, I really enjoyed it. However, I do think there was a small discrepancy in the book uh, regarding the, the method of the death. I don't know if the author um, miswrote something or if I misread something because the person murdered was stabbed uh, throughout the main part of the book and then in the end they referred to him being shot. Now, maybe he was both and I just misread it, but if anyone else has read it and also noticed the same thing, please let me know. But it didn't really detract. I mean, everybody makes a mistake if that is the case. And uh, the story itself was really good, and it was a quick, easy read and a nice a nice little mystery. Uh, so yeah, that was Fatal Finds in Nuala by Harriet Steele. Regarding the second book in March Mystery Madness, uh, The Department of uh, Sensitive Crimes, I haven't started yet, but it's also a small book, so hopefully when I do, it won't take me very long uh, to get through. Now, going through into uh, the uh, March of the Mammoths, I chose uh, Vietnam, an epic tragedy, 1945 to 1975 by Max Hastings, who is a very well-regarded British military historian. Uh, if you haven't read any of his works, I suggest you do. It's very he's he's an excellent writer. Uh, really, he tells the the stories of these uh, conflicts, whether it's the Second World War or Korean War or Vietnam, uh, extremely well. And he does so from, especially like with the, with the case of Vietnam from an outsider's perspective. You know, he's neither Vietnamese, he's not American, he's not French, uh, so he looks at it really from uh, an outsider's uh, point of view. And it's, again, like all his books, very well written. Uh, it's quite fast-paced. I'm uh, just about, perhaps, coming up to a quarter of the way through that. Um, I got to quite a surprising part where uh, the French are speaking with the Americans about intervening. And some particular hardliners in America suggested dropping some strategic uh, atomic bombs on the Viet Cong. Uh, which, uh, well, thankfully didn't happen, of course, but, uh, but it's very good. And there's a lot of stuff in there I had no idea. I'm, I'm, I'm not very well versed in a lot of uh, American history, which is something I'm trying to, um, trying to improve. So uh, I don't know why I started with Vietnam. I think it's just because I like Max Hastings and it was one of the books I hadn't read. So um, I've started there. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, that's how I'm going. It's, it's over um, 800 pages, so it certainly fits the uh, criteria for uh, March Mystery Madness. Uh, sorry, <laughs> forgive me, March of the Mammoths. Goodness, um, all this uh, alliteration is confusing me. Uh, right, so moving on, uh, I have also some books that I said I would read for uh, Women's History Month. 
Uh, I'm currently re reading The Wonderful Adventures of Mrs. Seacole in Many Lands, and this is the uh, memoir or autobiography of Mrs. Mary Seacole, who is a very um, acclaimed um, black heroine in, uh, in Britain. Um, even so, she doesn't really get the, the recognition perhaps that she deserves. Um, the book itself is really interesting, actually. Um, it's written by her, supposedly, though uh, someone said it may well have been ghostwritten, uh, but certainly she would have had the input. And it starts off with a little bit of her early life uh, being born in Jamaica uh, to a Scottish father and a Jamaican or black Jamaican mother. Um, so she's mixed race, um, which of course at the time uh, wouldn't have been uh, very easy. But what surprises me from time to time is her own use of language uh, regarding race and colour. She doesn't shy away uh, from using uh, words that would make us very uncomfortable today, specifically the, the N-word, um, to describe others. Now, I don't know if that's done in a way that it's meant in the kind of sympathetic way or not. It seems that it might be uh, that way. She does talk an, a lot about um, race and, and colour and complexion. Uh, maybe, of course, a good reason at the time she seems to be quite uh, conscious of it. She actually refers to herself as a, as a yellow woman, uh, being of mixed race. Uh, I didn't uh, hear that really before. Um, and she, as I said, she starts off in, in, uh, in, in Jamaica, where she's uh, raised um, by, uh, by, not by her mother, actually. She's raised, I can't remember if it's her grandmother or a family friend, uh, raises her for part of her life. Eventually, she does move in with her mother. She develops this interest in uh, medicine and uh, local medicines and this kind of thing, and she practices on her dolls when she's little, then she takes to practicing on um, <laughs> household household pets and other animals that happen to be around. Um, and then, yeah, she does spend some time uh, learning from her mother, who is a, a kind of nurse um, at the time. Uh, when her mother passes away, she decides to spend a bit of time uh, in Panama, where her brother lives. And at the time, it's a really, really wild place. Um, you know, it's got loads of different kind of itinerant peoples trying to, you know, make their fortune. Because there's no Panama Canal at the time, people are kind of just crossing the Isthmus of Panama uh, to, to uh, you know, cross from the Atlantic to the Pacific over land. So her brother actually runs a hotel uh, in one town there. And it's really kind of like something from the Wild West. You know, there are a lot of uh, Americans there who are coming uh, via Panama to reach California and join the gold rush. Uh, and it's, um, yeah, it does seem like a really dangerous place. While she's there, there's a great cholera outbreak, uh, which uh, kind of tests her, her nursing ability. Um, there are a few kind of nasty incidents and things that we would find a bit shocking today. I'm not sure about them because of the way she writes about it. For example, uh, a baby dies of the cholera and she actually, well, the, the baby doesn't have any family and she decides to carry out some kind of um, scientific study or dissection on it herself, which, which shocked me a little bit, especially as she was happy to write about it. Um, though she was very kind uh, and, and caring in the way she wrote about the, the, the poor baby uh, that passed. Um, she's coming, where I'm up to at the moment, she's coming to the end of her time in Panama and she's uh, thinking of leaving. And there was, uh, you know, several parties held uh, for the end of the season. And at one of them, um, she gets toasted. Uh, you know, a toast is raised to her for all the work uh, she did to help the people in the uh, in the in the small town that she was living in, and uh, this was done by an American gentleman. Um, and uh, at the time, she she talks about how he's chewing his chewing tobacco, and uh, she relates the speech and the pauses are you know that he's he's spitting out his tobacco when she does it. 
So I'll read a bit of the speech to you because it's a bit interesting. It does focus on her on her race, and I'll read the speech from the from the American man and then her reply to it, which is quite interesting as well. So, well, gentlemen, I expect you all support me in drinking of this toast that I do, Auntie Seacole, gentlemen. I give you Auntie Seacole. And at that point, she indicates that he he spits out some tobacco. <clears throat> we can't do less for her after what she's done for us. More spitting. Um, when the cholera was among us, gentlemen, not many months ago. More spitting. So I say, God bless the best yellow woman he ever made. From Jamaica, gentlemen. From the Isle of Springs. Well, gentlemen, I expect there are only two things we're vexed for, and the first is that she ain't one of us, a citizen of the great United States. And the other thing is, gentlemen, that Providence made her a yellow woman. I calculate, gentlemen, you're all as vexed as I am that she's not wholly white. Shocking stuff, isn't it, really? But I do reckon on your rejoicing with me that she's so many shades removed from being entirely black. And I guess if we could bleach her by any means we would, and thus make her as acceptable in any company as she deserves to be. Gentlemen, I give you Auntie Seacole. Horrible, isn't it? I mean, I know people say, of course, it's of that time, but I think it's quite shocking, you know, especially as she you know, was responsible for saving all their lives and things. It's not, not very nice. Her brother kind of indicates that she shouldn't reply because she's, she's obviously upset. And I, you know, I give her full credit that she's such a strong woman and she stands up and, and does so. I'll read to you her reply. I will admit one word, which um, is the N word, of course, that, uh, you know, I don't really feel very comfortable saying. Gentlemen, I return you my best thanks for your kindness in drinking my health. As for what I've done in cruises, Providence evidently made me to be useful, and I can't help it. But I must say that I don't altogether appreciate your friend's kind wishes with respect to my complexion. If it had been as dark as any, insert a word I won't say, I should have been just as happy and as useful and is much respected by those whose respect I value. And as to his offer of bleaching me, I should, even if it were practicable, decline it, without any thanks. As to the society which the process might gain me admission into, all I can say is that, judging from the specimens I have met with here and elsewhere, I don't think that I shall lose much by being excluded from it. So, gentlemen, I drink to you and the general reformation of American manners. So she told them, didn't she? Um, you know, she said at first that they were unsure how to react, but in the end, I think they took it um, well and they kind of laughed good-naturedly and probably were a little bit embarrassed. But... You can see, you know, bear in mind, this is around the 1840s, 1840s, maybe early, 18, uh, early 1850s. So, you know, the world is, is a very different place, but it is quite horrible. This poor woman who's already dedicated so much to, you know, helping other people still has to come up against these kind of um, prejudices. So far, I'm really enjoying it. It's something very, it's very interesting, especially as it's told in her own words. Uh, and she does seem to be a very remarkable woman indeed. So that was The Wonderful Adventures of Mrs. Siegel. And uh, as I say, I'm about a third of the way through that. The next book in uh, Women's History Month that I have yet to start, but will do soon, hopefully, is A Woman in Berlin, Eight Weeks in a Conquered City. This is a diary of a Berlin woman who um, experiences all the um, trauma, tragedy, and a uh, horror of uh, being uh, occupied by an invading army uh, and uh, given what um, history tends to say what happened by with Russian soldiers who went into Germany 
I'm sure this will not be a, a very easy read, but I do look forward to starting it. And the last one, which I have read uh, two chapters of so far and thoroughly enjoying it, is by another remarkable woman, uh, Gertrude Bell, um, and this is Persian Pictures. And this is um, a short book about her travels in Persia or Iran at the end of the 19th century whilst visiting her uh, uncle, who is, um, I think he's uh, the equivalent of the British ambassador to uh, the court of the Shah at the time. And I'll, I'll give you more of an update on that when I read it. So there we go. I hope you found some of that interesting. Certainly, I'm, I'm finding all of these really, really interesting, although not all, all of them are particularly easy reads from an emotional point of view anyway. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'll let you know how I get on with them and certainly look forward to seeing you all next time. Thank you very much for your uh, kind uh, viewing of this video. Please take care of yourselves and stay healthy. See you all soon. Take care. All the best. Bye-bye.